athlete who was pulled over by the police says he was racially profiled by armed officers who were heavy-handed when he was stopped. Ricardo Dos Santos says it's the second time it's happened. Five Metropolitan Police officers are now facing gross misconduct charges over that incident back in 2020. Gargi Patel has more. Um, Ricardo, thanks for being uh, here this morning. Look, the reality is I, I used to deal with sort of cases like this. So I'm asking you questions. It's not because I disagree with you. It's because people out there want to know uh, and understand a little bit more. This wasn't the first time this happened to you. 2020, uh, that was a stop and search situation. Yeah. We now know that that's resulted in uh, officers who are subject to gross misconduct charges. This is a different situation insofar as you're driving your car. It's a nice-looking car, uh, as I understand it. Um, and they're concerned about you being on your mobile phone. You overtake um, a, a group of actual armed police officers. Um, and at that point, um, they want you to stop. Now, um, they signal to you to stop. It, it's no criticism of, of you, but it's the concern they express. Why not stop um, immediately? You've said that this is an example of racial profiling. Mm -hmm. um, this escalates. I've watched that video several times, and... Um, there are um, a number of occasions um, on the A40 where you were, um, several parking spots where you could have said, look, I'm just going to stop the car. Whether this is right or wrong, um, I now need to make sure that I uh, comply because I don't want this to escalate. Yeah. Um, I understand. And um, it's something that a, a, a lot of people would have done. But the way and the matter that it happened, um, it happened so quickly. It was... Um, it wasn't that they were behind me and they had the lights on. They instantly overtook, I mean, came in front of me and then slammed on the lights. And by doing so, I needed, um, I didn't know what was going on. So I just went round, otherwise I would have went in, into the back of them. And I, I, had, I needed time to process what was going on. I, I didn't understand why, um, why it happened. So because I, I'm not really familiar with the road around Wood Lane, I thought the only place I know that I'll be safe around this area is coming off the A40, which I can't, I, I knew again, um, not to stop on the hard shoulder of a dark road. Well, well, it wasn't in your mind, the fact this has happened in 2020, right? I've been stopped for a completely unreasonable purpose and it's going to end up just as it did uh, two years ago. Was that was what in the forefront of your mind? Yeah, um, I was thinking mainly on my safety on um, how things escalated and hence why, again, I, I did want to stop somewhere where people were around and would be around, and um, which is why I stopped a little bit further. And you've put this footage out on Twitter because your car has cameras, doesn't it? So you were able to Multiple sort of capture cameras, yeah. what happened. What happened then when you did stop? Um, when I stopped, um, two officers came towards either side of the car one officer came, banged on the window, and then had the button out, ready to smash, and the other officer came, and um, he was a lot calmer. You know, he, he wanted to talk to me. So I said to him, I'll talk to you because you're, 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 you're coming as a human. And um, he said, you know, we're stopping you because we thought that you was on the phone. And then when I told him, okay, I wasn't, um, he then said, oh, okay, well, um, why didn't you stop? And I said, I didn't stop because I didn't feel safe to do so at that time. Mm. And I stopped here because it's more lit up and I feel much safer. Just to be clear, seven armed officers showed up uh, yeah. in circumstances where they were concerned that you were mo using a mobile phone. That's, that's how it, it escalated. Yeah. Listen, there are difficult questions that have to be asked. That is a reasonable suspicion to stop a vehicle. It's different legally from stop from stop and search, yeah. right? I just want to stop there and give you some statistics about stop and search, which is different from what happened in this situation. This is a 2020 situation. We'll come back to that. Um, uh, there are 7.5 uh, stops for every 1,000 people that are stopped, right, by the police, happen not to be people of colour, and it's 52 uh, uh, stops per 1,000 who are people of colour. Now, as I understand it, and I'm just going to be clear, because I wanted to speak to Alex Beresford yesterday and as many colleagues as I can. I understand that there are many people from communities of colour who don't want to stop, stop, stop and search, but they want it to be uh, reasonable and conducted in a way which keeps people safe. And I, and I assume you would agree with that. I, I'm, I'm totally for that. You know, if, if there's a reason for it, by all means, um, carry it on. But, but then... But, um, 
stuff for a, f a phone, for s suspecting someone to be on a phone. Mm -hmm. What's your suspicion here? Let's just call it what it is, right? Because there's no point uh, beating around the bush, OK? You're in a posh car. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. You're a young, good-looking man of colour with a good-looking uh, partner. You know, what do you suspect? Let's just say what it is. No reason for I, you to be concerned about this. Why do you suspect you've been stopped by I, these I, police? I do think because they, they, they saw me. They saw a person of colour in, in the car. And, yeah, it was, it was let's see what he does and... Mm -hmm. And, and that's why, you know, the phone use, I mean, to stop somebody for a phone and call seven officers. Well, just to be clear, your case is that the phone was uh, down in between I'm, your legs and you were able to, to, to even my lap, show yeah. them. That. Yeah, yeah. It's a good job that there was uh, a, a cameras, to say mm -hmm. the least. You, you've left some of the footage out, which you've got with lawyers. Now, just to be clear, as a matter of law, you don't have to say anything to your lawyer, right? Uh, that you, you wouldn't say to me. It's really important mm -hmm. that's protected. Yeah. Uh, but I wonder whether you're considered taking further action. Well, we will. We, um, we've thought, thought about it because we think it's more of a harassment thing now. We know because it, it hasn't only happened once since 2020. It's, it's now the second time I've been stopped mm -hmm. since 2020 and the multiple times pre uh, previously. Mm -hmm. And how does it make you feel? Because obviously, you know, we look at the statistics that Rob was bringing up there. You know, it does seem to be that um, there is that unfairness when it comes to how people are treated because of the colour of their skin? Um, well, for me, it's like... I'm very cautious of, of, of what I do. And, um, and I'm, every time I see, I see a, a police car, especially late at night, um, in, in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking, it, would I or am I going to get stopped? Yeah. And um, it just, it, it's honestly very scary. There'll be people out there uh, going, well, you know, could the police stop me? I'd just stop the car and uh, I would be reasonable and uh, wouldn't worry about it. But they may have different experiences of, with the of police. Of course. Maureen, you know, what's your sort of experience? I wonder whether you know sort of friends and family who, for whom this is just sort of par for the course. It is par for the course. The fact of the matter is whether you're a black man, black woman, you are scared. Even when you know full well you have done nothing wrong, if you drive past a, a police car or a police car, ask you to pull over, you are scared. Because of what, what we've seen with incidences that have happened to Ricardo, that have happened to others that you see on Twitter, where potentially, even though you are being reasonable and you are speaking in a quiet voice, you could be manhandled, you could be tasered, you could be seriously injured by officers. It's a reality that you're very scared. Mm -hmm. I've been scared in that situation. I've been top, stopped twice, um, having done nothing wrong. It's frightening. And, mm. I, and I know Alex will, will say the same thing, yeah. will be testament yeah. to that as well. Mm. And it must be frustrating, I imagine, to, to be in that situation. It is. Because, um, uh, you know, I, I honestly thought that it, it's, it's, it's done, it's over for me. I'm, it's, I, I've, I've not done anything wrong. It's, I'm, I'm, I can't, I'm not putting myself in a position for them to stop me. And um, I sold the previous cars I had to, to then get this one. Because I, I, you know, I, I wanted um, to stand out a, a lot less. Yeah. But um, again, it's not the car. Speakly, you sold your car uh, for from a, a posh one to a slightly less posh one because you were tired of getting stopped in it. To be less yes. of a target. Yes, though. because yeah, I, 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 I sold the BMW and the Mercedes that we had to get a Tesla because the Tesla just it just fit. It's more of a car. It's a car that you see every day. Mm. It's not a car that you would associate with anything. So, but now it hit me and says, it's not the car. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Now, you've got this extra footage, and I understand you and your lawyers are considering uh, taking this further with Metropolitan yeah. Police. In 2020, as you know, uh, the reality is that there are now officers who are uh, facing gross misconduct charges. We haven't seen the complete picture. I don't know whether you're going to release them, uh, but no doubt we'll hear whatever happens legally uh, moving moving forward. Uh, and thank you. Thank you, Alex, as well, for talking to me about your experience as well, Maureen, as well. Thank you. Um, just to be clear, the Metropolitan Police have said, we've now recorded this matter as a public complaint. We've also referred it on a voluntary basis to the Independent Office for Police Conduct, recognising the public interest. I think they've tweeted you, haven't they, uh, asking to get in touch with yeah. you. Uh, have, are you interested in talking to them? My lawyer will, will, will deal with that. Right. OK. More to come. All right, Ricardo, thanks very much for coming in to see us this morning.